Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Donson, and today we're going to talk about five little tricks that you just, you just got to know how to do it. It's going to help your selection game in Photoshop, and Photoshop's all about making selections. You select stuff, and you change colors, and you move stuff around, and that's kind of the essence of Photoshop, right? So selections are super important, and these are five really cool tips that are going to help you just get better, more refined, more precise, more awesome selections. Let's jump into Photoshop and get started right now. Alrighty, well here we are in Photoshop, ready to have some fun. And tip number one is select and masks feather and contrast working in unison. Uh, this is particularly effective when you're trying to use select and mask uh, to refine selections that have long straight runs or edges that have high sharp contrast. I'm gonna go and grab my quick selection tool and hit select subject and it's gonna do a, a wonderful job of selecting this. And you can just refine the selection a little bit here and there if needed. And then I'm gonna jump into the select and mask dialog box uh, I'm going to adjust the view here to just view this over the black background because it just, yeah, it's the way I want to work with this here. It's going to really show us these edges. And you can see down here on the forearm that the edges are a little jaggy. They're not very smooth. They're not really the way we want them to be. We want a perfect smooth edge. So over here in global refinements, we have feather, contrast, and shift edge. And we're going to use feather first and sort of kind of destroy our selection, if you will, and uh, just pump some feathering in there. And then also increase the contrast until that edge kind of uh, comes back together a little bit. And then lastly, we're just going to shift the edge inwards. You're going to shift it to a negative percentage. And this is all going to depend on your image. I've got, you know, in the negative 30s here, you might need something a little more, or maybe you can get away with something a little less. Just whatever works for your image is going to be great. And um, then I'm going to choose to just output this uh, with a layer mask, and it's going to do that. I'm going to drag it over into another image. I got this Tower of Terror uh, from the, the, one of the Disney parks. Just transform it a little bit and you can see how these edges work nicely. Now, this little pseudo composite we're putting together here brings me right to tip number two. Uh, and this just has to do with when you make a selection like this where we pulled it off of that really bright blue background, you do still have that edge, you know, where the color's reflecting on the side of the lemon a little bit on the, on the skin and everything. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my layer mask as a selection by command or control clicking it. And, uh, then I'm going to go up and contract my selection. So I'm going to contract it. I usually contract it, you know, 15 pixels, something like that. And then I will feather the selection as well by about 45 pixels. And then I'm going to go and inverse the selection. Once I've done all that, I'm going to create a new layer and I am going to just sample a color off the background. I'll just grab one of these orange tones and then I'm going to just fill. Uh, I'll just use, you know, edit fill and fill with the foreground color and it's going to fill that whole selection with that orangey foreground color. And then I'm going to hover over the border between that orange edge color layer and the layer with the hand and the lemon. Hold down my alter option key and you're going to see a little icon. That's going to allow you to clip the color to the layer beneath, which is exactly what we want to do. And now you can see we've got this orange glow around the edges. Looks pretty bad. I'm going to change it to, you can go with either hue or color or soft light blend modes. I'm going with soft light and just reducing the opacity. And we really help to temper and in fact remove a lot of that blue reflected light and make it uh, just kind of one of the highlight colors from the uh, composite image into which we're moving our little hand with the lemon. All right, and tip number three brings us here to uh, this model, and she's got a thick head of hair, to say the least, and we want to just make a quick selection around that. So again, I'll just go with my quick selection tool and choose select subject, jump into quick, ma or select the mask, excuse me, and uh, I'm going to use my refine edge brush and quickly paint around the hair to make a, just a quick selection of this. And then I'm going to drag a background behind her. This is, I believe, a town in Switzerland. Now, the key is you can see she does have this kind of fringy matting stuff around her hair. Now, there's a a thousand and one different ways to get rid of this stuff. This is just one little trick that is so useful. You grab your brush tool and you set the brush tool itself to the soft light blend mode. And then you can just paint with the color black and you're going to really remove a lot of that matting. Now, it's not perfect, uh, but it really does a great job of getting things started for you. Um, and it all depends on the head of hair, the color of the background and the color of the scene into which you're dragging your object or your model or whatever it is you're cutting out. Don't sleep on the brush tool. Just set to soft light and, uh, you know, paint black in that mask. You can really clean up a lot of glowing, halo-y type edges, get rid of a lot of fringing, and get a really, really great result, and really quickly as well. So the brush tool, set to soft light. You don't want to sleep on it. 
Okay, and tip number four brings us to this sort of stony, outbacky looking scene where I'm going to use my quick selection tool and just grab a rough selection of the sky and I'll go in and tweak along the edges where we have this very complex rock pattern. I'll drag in a sky behind that and just kind of reduce the opacity and shift the colors a little bit to kind of sort of try to make it match a little bit. And the tip is for selections like this, and think of this as sky replacements where you have a lot of trees and branches, things like that, you can select this layer mask that we've just created. So we created that selection and then we just hit add new layer mask uh, or go through select a mask, whatever your preferred method is. And you get this really jagged selection along the sky and things like that. And you know, some of these rocks are semi-transparent. So you select the layer mask and use the levels of uh, adjustment and you can bring back by just adjusting the black input point, you can bring back those edges and really make them look more solid. Or if you need to take away some of the edges, uh, you would do the opposite. So you can just push and pull these input points uh, and just really zoom in on your edge like I have here and watch them and see what they do. Sometimes you need to drag the black input point. Sometimes you need to drag the white input point. It all depends on what you're doing and how you need to use this. And here I'll just speed through an image uh, where I'm doing it some treetops as well, dragging in that same sky, making some adjustments. And it just cleans up and adds and preserves, I should say, a ton of detail in really, really complex edges like those treetops and like those rocks uh, that we looked at just a moment ago. Okay, now the last thing I want to share with you, and this is tip number five, is decontaminate colors. And decontaminate, decontaminate colors is a little option in Select a Mask, and it can do a lot of damage, uh, a lot of images. It doesn't look that great on, but if you use it well, uh, it can actually be pretty useful and it can help you out and kind of bail you out and really make complex selections like this woman's head of hair uh, look quite a bit better. So we're going to extract her off of this busy background and we're going to move her back to that sort of deserty scene uh, that we created a moment ago. So what I do is, again, just go ahead, create a quick selection around her using select a mask or whatever your preferred method is. Jump again into select a mask. Use that refine edge brush. You know, really wrap around her hair. Clean that stuff up. She's got this kind of furry jacket on. We'll do the same thing around the edges of the jacket and uh, here I can just choose hey decontaminate color but now as I'm looking at this it's just over this background which we're removing her from so I can't really see much of what decontaminate color is doing so let me show you a better way to work with this right if we grab this image and I'm just going to take it and drag it and drop it on top of my background right and now we're going to do the same thing select or jump into select a mask and here in select a mask I can choose as my editing view mode uh, on layers and what on layers is going to do is show me the image in context in the PSD that I'm working. So here I can see it's going to show me her being cut out and that proper background behind her. So I can really get a solid idea of how the image is going to look a and also B when we do decide to decontaminate these colors, what exactly that decam decontaminate colors is doing. So once I go over that, and we're not getting the most perfect selection here, we're more or less doing this just for show real quick. Um, I'm going to tick on decontaminate colors and you can see it kind of builds out the edges. It does a lot. In fact, it does a little bit too much. And you've got this slider where you can reduce the amount. And I almost always reduce the amount uh, when I'm using decontaminate colors. I just think it's a great option to have and you can really dial it in and pick what looks perfect. Again, there's some areas of her hair here where I really would go and spend a bit more time adjusting and tweaking, but let's pretend like it looks perfect for the sake of what we're doing uh, at this particular moment. So I'm just going to output this as a new layer with layer mask. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because decontaminate colors is a little bit of a destructive edit. And then I can go over, I can use my little soft light brush trick and clean up the edges a little bit. And then also use a couple matching color techniques here to just help her blend with the scene a little bit better. Try to get her color and saturation to match. And maybe we'll go in and just throw some uh, camera raw clarity boost uh, type stuff here and just pull the whole scene together a little bit. And uh, it's just a really, really helpful trick there using decontaminate color. And of course, we just do a little double dip there with the old soft light brush as well. So that is the five absolute must-know tips and tricks for getting better selections, better edges for your selections in Photoshop, and it works on every kind of selection you can imagine, whether you're selecting animals, people, objects, crazy heads of hair, cars, skies, you name it. You can use these techniques everywhere and anywhere, and I think 
uh, you're really going to enjoy these. Well, yep, that's it for this one, folks. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell as well so you get a little notification every time a new Photoshop or retouching uh, related video goes up here on this channel. Uh, and also, check out this video here on uh, matching color and uh, adding some photos together and using a few adjustment layers, kind of what I breezed over in this video earlier. I think you'll really enjoy it. I think you'll really like it. And just a quick thank you from me to you for sticking around and watching this video all the way till the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.